gamers. I'm Michael Chu from the Overwatch team. We're sorry we couldn't be there in London, but I wanted to let you know that we are hard at work in new content for Overwatch in 2017. Me and a few of the developers from the team are going to take a crack at answering some questions from the community and from the editors of PC Gamer. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron Keller. I'm the assistant game director on the Overwatch team. I'm Jeff Goodman. I'm the lead hero designer. So we've been given um, a slew of questions from the community, and um, we're going to take some time to answer them for you. And uh, let's, get, let's get rolling. Yeah. yeah. So Dink Joker I Funny asks, when will there be an animated Overwatch movie? I want it. I need it. <laughs> needs it. He really <laughs> needs it. Um, I, I love this question, um, and um, everyone on the Overwatch team is... I'm so excited that the universe and all the characters has resonated with everybody and they've fallen in love with it enough to to ask for something um, like an animated Overwatch movie. Um, and if you aren't aware, we already have six animated shorts out. You can go to playoverwatch.com and find all of them there. As far as a, a much longer feature-length movie, we don't have any immediate plans for something like that, um, but I encourage everybody to watch the ones that, that we've done already. All right. Next up is uh, Flotsam X asks, at what point does the Overwatch team need to decide that a character needs work, i.e. buffs slash nerfs slash adjustment? Um, it's sort of similar to the, the first question I answered, I think. It's, um, it's, it's pretty tricky. I, I think uh, the big thing is just making sure that we have, the, you know, we have this huge roster of characters. We want to make sure that people feel like they can just pick whatever they want to play or whatever they, they're playing a certain strategy with their friends. They want to feel like it's all viable and you don't feel like, well, I want, I can, I want to play this, but I feel guilty because nobody wants me to play it or something. That, that sort of gets, when it starts to get to that point where uh, you, you know, you're kind of feeling guilty, then that, that's sort of where we want to step in and make sure, like, no, no, everything is viable, everything's good. There's, there's a lot of room for growth to learn new characters and new ways and new strategies. So um, we just want to make sure that the roster that we have is all very useful and playable and a lot of fun. So that's sort of the number one value, I think, there. Chaos Link 63 asks, do you think you'll ever add old brawls like Lucio Ball and Junkenstein's Revenge into custom games? Um, so ga um, game modes like Lucio Ball and Junkenstein's Revenge, we think that um, just the flavor of them um, are kind of really intrinsic to the, to the events that they take place in. It feels um, odd for us to take Junkenstein's Revenge out of the, the Halloween event. Um, that being said, we just um, we're currently running another event right near uh, right now, the Lunar New Year, and the brawl for that is Capture the Flag, and we do plan on bringing Capture the Flag out of uh, the Lunar New Year event and into the custom game browser that is actually going to be coming soon. So um, I think that what you'll see from us in the future is that certain events will stay, or certain brawls will stay in the event, and then certain brawls that we think. Um, are appropriate for the rest of the game and are appropriate for um, the custom game, um, that they'll move into that. Now, that being said, when we come back to um, summer games or we come back to Halloween, um, we might allow people the ability to put custom rules into something like Lucio Ball, uh, but it, that's something that we're still kind of discussing right now. Cool. Lucio Ball is super fun. I personally love Lucio Ball. <laughs> you're, well, you're good at it. <laughs> well, it helps a little bit. Uh, all right, Pixel Valet Blog asks, can Mercy Revives be added to the kill feed? I think it would be useful info to see who was revived. Um, it's interesting, we actually talked about that super early on, so it's kind of funny to see this question, and I guess maybe we made the wrong decision. <laughs> but we were sort of really careful initially of what we put into the kill feed because we wanted to make sure that whenever it's sort of lighting up in the corner, you could kind of rely on the information and make it very easy to parse what's going on. Uh, and that Mercy Res was definitely on the bubble of like, well, it's sort of useful to know because if you've killed somebody and then they get res, they're not dead anymore. So the kill feed is sort of relevant for that piece of information. So um, I think we may revisit that. I think we, we've been talking about it again, especially now that I know it's come up a lot in the community. Um, so yeah, I definitely think we're up for it. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> oh, I asked that one. Um, Comics Inc. asks, what was your inspiration for the universe of Overwatch? Um, so Blizzard's actually a pretty amazing place to work. Um, it's full of people that are passionate about a lot of different things. Um, everyone's passionate about games and gaming here, but you have big comic book nerds, um, cosplay people, 
um, tabletop gaming people, people that are really into movies and books and everything. And so we all draw inspiration from so many different areas, and we use that to kind of like fuel our creativity for what we want um, our games and the universe to be. And Overwatch in particular, um, we picked this... um, near future sci-fi setting for the game and one of the reasons we did it is one we just think that it's a it's a great space that you know that not a lot of people are in and it allows us a lot of freedom with our heroes to do interesting things but it also lets us make the universe be um kind of really approachable and grounded at the same time and so if you if you go through any of our levels a lot of times you'll see that um like in dorado it takes place almost in like an older town in Mexico, and it might not fit everybody's vision of what the future is going to look like, but I think anytime that somebody steps foot in that, that map, not only can they see like, wow, there's all these like cool little tech elements in here, but I know exactly where I am at any moment, and I know what the fantasy is of, of this place, and I can kind of relate to everything. It's You can take Star Wars in, as an example of that. It's it's this kind of crazy sci-fi movie, but everything in it is understandable in a way that feels kind of familiar to you. Um, and that was one of the big values to us when we were creating a lot of the art and a lot of the world for Overwatch. Tove Alm asks, will Jeff Kaplan ever become a playable hero? Man, uh, Jeff Kaplan, <laughs> uh, well, as a hero designer, I think I, that would be very tricky for me to just bounce that one. I Good might, luck with this one. I get fired on that one. Um, no, I, uh, I, I don't know. What would you have? You have like a, this ult would be like a beard that just grows out and like stuns everybody <laughs> and then just it's magnificence. Puts on a flannel shirt, you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he, actually there's some concept art from the community I've seen of this before, so... So what is it, like him and the hero select, like, st- standing up there? Yeah, and he's got his, like, little hoodie on. I, I haven't seen any skins yet, so I don't know what those would oh, be. yeah, maybe, <laughs> but, I mean, we're skin. halfway there. That's we right. have concept, concept art. Concept art, we just see the model, and, you know, we're on our way. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we'll see it. Okay. Real Angel Wings asks, when will we be getting a theater mode? Um, so this is, this is a tricky question. Um, a theater mode... Um, isn't something that we plan on having um, an opportunity to work on uh, any time in the near future. And it's mostly because um, a feature like that is a ton of work. Um, the team really likes that idea. And I think before we would ever get something like a theater mode, we um, would like to provide other things to the players. Um, one of those would be the ability to save highlights. Um, and we would also like to provide um, replays in the game as well. And those, I think, are both really good stepping stones that we could work on before we would ever um, offer something like a full theater mode. And they would also be things, technology, that would be completely necessary to have before um, we could do work on a theater mode. So I think you could look for us to work and release features like that in the future, and then maybe long-term after that do something like a theater mode. Yep, sounds good. All right, so I think that wraps it up for our community questions. Is that it? Yep, that's okay. it. Okay. So next up, we're going to have uh, Michael Chu up here as our lead writer, and we're going to do some uh, editorial questions. Hey, I am not Aaron Keller, but this is still Jeff Goodman. Uh, I'm Michael Chu. I'm the lead writer on Overwatch, and uh, I have some questions here that were submitted by the editors of PC Gamer. Uh, so we're going to ask each other these questions and probably make up some answers for you. <laughs> uh, do you want to start, or am yeah, I starting? I'll go first. That's All right. Cool. All right, so first question. Will you ever do another ARG? Will I ever do another ARG? <laughs> you personally. Um, so I guess uh, this is a question about the Somber ARG, which went on for quite a <laughs> no. while, uh, as, as you may or may not know. Well, you know, obviously. Um, I think that uh, you know this was our first shot at doing something like this. Uh, I think we learned a lot of lessons, it's fair to say. Um, we learned a lot about you know what makes an ARG interesting, um, what things people really enjoyed. I think that if uh, we we would love, you know, probably for it to have gone a little quicker, um, <laughs> but I think that, you know, we wouldn't rule it out, uh, rule it out in the future. Yeah, it was a um, lot of fun overall. I think. I mean, it was a new way for us to engage with everybody, which we haven't ever done before. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, and uh, who's to say we haven't already started the next Ooh, one? Ooh, look at that! <laughs> All right. All right, I'm my up. turn. Yep. All right. Diva has undergone a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. Are you happy with her? <laughs> Am I happy with her? Um, yeah, she has gone, a lot of, gone through a lot of changes. She's been, uh, she's been pretty tricky to balance, actually. Uh, you know, she's got a lot going on with her role in the game where she's, she's a tank character, so she's in there to soak damage and uh, get in there and you know, make space for your allies to come in behind you. 
Um, but she also is sort of has this, uh, you know, the fantasy of her character, a lot of it is this giant mech with these huge guns. So you kind of expect to be able to go in there and knock everybody down and just destroy everybody. And like, okay, everyone's dead. Everyone come in. I did it all. <laughs> like, I mean, that's what uh, Diva is basically saying to me when I play her. <laughs> I know. She's like almost literally, we need the VO line. Is the only thing we're missing. Um, unfortunately, she can't quite do all that. It's not quite fair to everybody else. You kind of would only play her in every situation. So some kind of had to give with her a little bit. Um, you know, there was a time before where she wasn't played very much at all. Uh, and it, really the issue with her was she was, you know, too easy to kill considering her, her size. She's so big, like it's pretty hard to miss her with anything you shoot at her. Um, so she ended up getting, uh, you know, buffed at that point in, in one patch and we went a little too far. So she ended up in that state I mentioned where she just like had no counter and there was no way to stop her. You felt like, what do you want me to do, Blizzard? I'm trying. Um, so what we decided to do there is pull back in a specific way so that she still very strong, still has a lot of health and still hard to kill, but certain characters have an easier time killing her now, um, such as Reaper and Roadhog. And, you know, the fact that she lost some armor means she, you know, those characters now are uh, much more viable options to be able to counter her. So if you feel like you're being oppressed by Diva, you're like, okay, I'm going to switch to Reaper. I'm going to handle this problem. Uh, so, so that was kind of where that came. And, and where she is now, I think, uh, she, yeah, she's in a pretty good spot. I mean, we're definitely keeping an eye on her. It's still pretty new. The changes are still pretty new. So it takes a while for the community and our, uh, you know, watching the stats and for everybody to adjust all the new strategies and things. So um, we're still keeping an eye on her and uh, we'll, we'll make sure she's, she's still viable. You're up now. Were you happy with the community's reaction in finding out about Tracer's relationship? Yeah, I would, I would definitely have to say that I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with the response. Um, it, was, uh, it was a really fun comic to write. Um, we're talking, obviously, about the, the holiday uh, special comic mm -hmm. that uh, delved into the personal lives of a lot of the Overwatch characters. Um, you know, one of my favorite things about that was just the opportunity to show um, some of the things about the, the heroes that you might not see normally, because obviously they're out on the battlefield, capping objectives, and eliminating each other. So I think that the uh, response was really great. You know, Overwatch is a game that is about embracing diversity, um, and I, I think that, you know, it's, it was really, it just felt great for us um, to be able to see people embrace uh, Tracer and her uh, adorable relationship with Emily. So, yeah, I'm definitely happy with it. All right. All right. Have you any plans for one-off events that aren't tied to seasonal celebrations? One-off events. Um, you know, we've done a lot of events, as you guys have seen. Uh, they've been highly successful. People really love them. We've uh, gotten a lot of feedback. In fact, in fact, most of the feedback we get is like, bring them back, bring them back. We want Lucio Ball back. We want all these events back. Um, so that's really, you know, telling. You know, like, okay, we're on the right track. We're, we're doing the right thing. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, we do have a lot more coming. This year is going to be particularly interesting. I think I, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, you guys are in for quite a ride. <laughs> that way. Um, as far as one-off events go, maybe. I mean, you know, I think nobody sort of expected us to do the first kind of events that sort of took people by surprise. And um, especially something like Chunk of Sons of Revenge, I think definitely took people by surprise. So... Uh, I think we're, we've shown that we're more than willing to try very different things for the game and definitely keep it fresh and interesting for you guys, so you'll have to stay tuned. More Lucio Ball, please. <laughs> yeah, more Lucio Ball. Hey, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> All right, next question for you. Okay. Is Reinhardt Ferris' dad? Ooh, this is a popular question, and I don't think that I've ever answered it before. So I could take the easy way out <laughs> and come up with some sort of vague, vague answer here. But I, I'm going to go ahead and say that no, Reinhardt is not Vera's dad. Yeah. Done. Stamped. Yeah, though, I mean, that just leaves a whole lot of other people who it could be. <laughs> That's true. Well, one off the list, though. We can record one off yeah. the list. There are some hints, though. Oh? Yeah. All right. You heard it here. Go searching. Expect to see threads immediately. <laughs> All right, uh, hit me. All right. How do you approach the challenge of balancing for casual play, the ladder, and the esports scene? Yeah, that is a challenge. Um, you know, obviously we have a lot of stats that uh, you guys don't always see, um, and so that does help because we can definitely break things down. By, you know, by uh, brackets, so we can see among all the tiers who's playing what and wh what's winning, what's losing, what are the popular characters. So um, we can look at a lot of stuff like that, which helps a lot. Um, uh, it's it's definitely challenging. There's some characters that have proven much more challenging in this area than others. For example. Bastion has been a really hot topic. And we, we sort of knew that going in, unfortunately, that this was probably likely to be the situation that was, we were going to run into, which is at lower tiers of play, Bastion is this oppressive you know, machine that you just cannot deal with. He just feels unstoppable. And at higher tiers of play, he just doesn't see play at all. And it's like this, he's like kind of the most extreme version of that. Um, so Bastion is a case where 
we're sort of looking into changing him to try to equalize that a little bit to try to make him more reasonable on both from both ends of the spectrum. Um, so it, it's something we're always keeping an eye on, and it, it's tricky for players sometimes to see some of the the balance changes in the game, and they're like, well, "This doesn't make sense to me. I don't. Why would you nerf that or buff that?" That's because. But players are kind of used to seeing just from their their you know their slice of the, the game, and they're used to seeing like their sort of meta game and what they're seeing. So. Um, there's there's definitely a, a large spectrum to sort of keep in mind, so um, we're, we're definitely very cognizant of it and keep an eye on it all the time. All right, next one for you. Do you have a sense of which characters fans have an affinity with more than others? Do you see noticeable differences in the popularity of certain skins, for example? Geez, certain skins are more popular than yeah, other ones. I'm that... trying to think if I can think of any. <laughs> off the top um, of your head. Off the top of my head, um, I think people like that... Um, Mercy one yeah, for Halloween Terror. Um, <laughs> she was dressed up as something I don't remember, and I think um, before that there was a, a Genji one that people oh, like. I know yes. I didn't get it, so I don't really remember which one it is. <laughs> well, pretty much all the Genji ones, really, to be real. That's true. But um, yeah, I think fiber. Uh, yeah, carbon fiber. Uh, I don't have that one either. I guess I could just buy it. <laughs> um, I don't play much Genji, so <laughs> right. uh, yeah, I think that it's really interesting though. The characters have so many different skins to choose from. I always think. That when I'm playing with someone and I see what skin they've chosen, it's kind of a I judge them immediately and make <laughs> make uh, decisions yeah. about their uh, you know their taste, uh, <laughs> personality, <laughs> their skill. Um, right, and right. you see that Nihon Genji, you're like, okay, well, pro Genji. <laughs> um, you know, for you me, never saw him, actually, for me, pro-Genji. for example, uh, I my current favorite combo is I play uh, Zenyatta with the Nutcracker skin. Oh, that's so so good. I think that probably tells you all you need to know about <laughs> my that's abilities in the game. How about you? Do you have a do you have one you like? Uh, man, I like uh, the Oni Genji. <laughs> it's really, really good. I can't help it. Um, and, uh, yeah, Witch Mercy. Can't go wrong with Witch Mercy. There you go. All right, Jeff, last question. What role is Hanzo designed to fill? What role is Hanzo designed to fill? Uh, well, Hanzo is a sniper character, so he's got that going for him. He's got a, a lot of range, a lot more range than uh, a lot of our other characters do. Um, obviously, the other big sniper that people are, use a lot is Widowmaker. Um, she's got a lot further range, so she's kind of in a different whole tier as far as that goes. Uh, Hanzo can much more easily mill around like the midfield and uh, kind of run around where you have, I don't know, Soldier 76 and stuff like that and, and be all, sort of on the ground. Um, he also has this you know, amazing ability to drop the sonar arrow wherever you need it to be so you can see around corners, you can see if there's a Bastion set up there, a Junkrat or something ready to you know, do a lot of damage. So... Um, that can be a huge asset. So uh, he's, he's got a lot of flexibility, actually. It was kind of interesting in a lot of ways, much like Soldier 76. Um, obviously, for him, though, it's a little more uh, feast or famine. Sometimes you, like when I plan, sometimes I hit all my shots. Sometimes I don't hit any shots. So that's, I don't, that's, that's, that's pretty much how it always works. It's like I'm playing, I'm hitting every shot. I'm like, this is amazing. I feel like I should nerf this character. This is out of control. And then, like, every miss everything, it's like, oh, character sucks. What am I doing here? <laughs> like, uh, but, you know, I, I think we, we're starting to see a lot of players. I practice him a lot and get a lot better, and I think we're sort of uh, pretty soon going to see some really breakout players do really well with him. Just a matter of time. Plus, his ult's incredible. His ult is incredible. <laughs> Especially with Zarya, it's nuts. All right, I think that's... I don't have nothing, nothing left for you. Yep, that's, uh, that's all, uh, all the questions we have. So uh, I would like to thank PC Gamer for having us and thank all of you for the tremendous support that you've shown Overwatch. Thanks, guys. And uh, hope you have a great time this weekend. Bye. See ya.